Now we shall consider a situation. Take a glass of water in your hand. Add one spoon of salt into it. Dissolve. What you are going to get by doing this? Salt solution. Am I right? Here salt is a solute and water is solvent. Add another spoon of salt. Dissolve it. Go on like this. At certain stage the salt will not be dissolved further. It will settle in the bottom. Am I right? Go check out this immediately. From this we can tell that there is certain specific amount of solute that can be dissolved in specific amount of solvent. And this is what we term as solubility. So solubility of a substance is its maximum amount that can be dissolved in a specified amount of solvent at a specified temperature. Solubility depends upon the nature of solute and solvent. It also depends on temperature as well as pressure. Let us see how temperature and pressure affect solution of a solid or a gas in liquid. Firstly, we shall consider the solubility of a solid in a liquid. Important thing you should note here is that every solid does not dissolve in a given liquid. For example, let us consider sodium chloride and sugar. So these two compounds that is sodium chloride and sugar dissolve easily in water. Consider naphthalene and anthracene. They do not dissolve in water. On the other hand, the naphthalene as well as anthracene dissolves readily in benzene but sodium chloride and sugar do not dissolve in benzene. How do we know whether a solute can be dissolved in a given solvent? In general, a solute dissolves in a solvent if the intermolecular interactions are similar in both the solute and solvent. Or we can tell that like dissolves like. That is polar solutes dissolve in polar solvents and nonpolar solutes dissolve in nonpolar solvents. When a solid solute is added to the solvent. Some solute dissolves and as the solute dissolves its concentration increases in the solution. This process is known as dissolution. Some solute particles in the solution collide with the other solid solute particles and get separated out of the solution. This process is known as crystallization. After some times, the two processes that is the dissolution and crystallization occurs at the same rate. At this stage, the number of solute particles going into the solution is equal to the number of solute particles that is separating out of the solution. And this creates a state of dynamic equilibrium in the system. At this equilibrium stage, the concentration of solute in the solution will remain constant under the given condition. That is, at a given temperature and pressure, the concentration of solute at this equilibrium state will remain same. The similar process is taking place when gases are dissolved in liquid solvents. Now, for this solution, if we add more solute, it cannot be dissolved at the same temperature and pressure. Such a solution is called as saturated solution. On the other hand, if you can dissolve more solute in a solution at the same temperature and pressure, we call such a solution as unsaturated solution. So to define an unsaturated solution is the one in which more solute can be dissolved at the same temperature and pressure. 
the solution which is in dynamic equilibrium with undissolved solute is the saturated solution and contains maximum amount of solute dissolved in a given amount of solvent so solubility of this saturated solution is equal to the concentration of the solute we have already studied that solubility of one substance into other depends on the nature of the substance in addition to these variables two other parameters that is temperature and pressure also controls the solubility of one substance in another temperature changes significantly affects the solubility of a solid in a liquid if we consider the equilibrium between solute solvent and the solution so this equilibrium is represented by the equation here as this is a dynamic equilibrium is must follow lee chatelier's principle in general for a saturated solution if the dissolution process is endothermic that is if heat is given to the system during dissolution delta h of solution is greater than 0 in this case the solubility increases with the increase in temperature and if the dissolution process is exothermic that is if heat is given out during the dissolution delta h of solution is less than 0 in this case the solubility will decrease with increase in temperature this was found true experimentally as well we know that solids and liquids are highly incompressible and practically they remain unaffected by changes in pressure as a result pressure does not have any significant effect on solubility of solids in liquid the process of dissolving a gas in a liquid solvent is similar to that of a solid in liquid solvent which we have discussed just now have you ever wondered that how aquatic plants and animals get oxygen for their survival it is the oxygen that is dissolved to a small extent in water that sustains all aquatic life many of the gases dissolve in water hydrogen chloride gas is highly soluble in water why there is a difference in solubility of different gases in water solubility of gases in liquids is affected by pressure and temperature to a great extent the solubility of gases increases with increase in pressure let us try to understand this effect of pressure considering a situation let us consider a system as shown in the figure here for solution of gases in a solvent the lower part is solution and the upper part is gaseous system at a pressure p and temperature t let us assume that this system is in a state of dynamic equilibrium that is in this system rate of gaseous particles entering and leaving the solution phase is the same now let us increase pressure over the solution phase by compressing the gas to a smaller volume now this compression increases the number of gaseous particles present in unit volume over the solution and also it increases the rate at which gaseous particles are striking the surfaces of the solution to enter it the solubility of gas will increase until a new equilibrium is reached now this results in an increase in the pressure of a gas above the solution and thus solubility of gas increases the first quantitative relation between pressure and solubility of a gas in a solvent was given by henry which is known as henry's law this law states that at a constant temperature the solubility of a gas in a liquid is directly proportional to the partial pressure of the gas 
present above the surface of the liquid or solution. At the same time, Dalton independently told that the solubility of a gas in a liquid solution is a function of partial pressure of the gas. Now, if we use the mole fraction of a gas in the solution as a measure of solubility, then we can tell that the mole fraction of gas in the solution is directly proportional to partial pressure of the gas over the solution. The most commonly used form of Henry's law states that the partial pressure of the gas in vapor phase is proportional to mole fraction of the gas in the solution. That is, partial pressure P is directly proportional to the mole fraction chi. So, mathematically, Henry's law is written as P is equal to KH into chi, where KH is Henry's law constant. According to this mathematical equation, when we plot a graph of partial pressure of the gas versus mole fraction of the gas in a solution, we should get a straight line that is passing through the origin. Different gases have different values of Henry's law constant at the same temperature. So you can check out these values from the table here. So this table tells us that Henry's law constant is a function of nature of the gas. And from the mathematical expression of Henry's law, we can tell that higher the value of Henry's law constant at a given pressure, lower is the solubility of the gas in that particular liquid. From the table, we can see that the value of Henry's law constant KH for both nitrogen and oxygen gases increases with increase in temperature. This indicates that the solubility of nitrogen and oxygen gas increases with decrease in the temperature. So it's due to this reason that the aquatic species are more comfortable in cold water rather than in warm waters. Aquatic life need oxygen dissolved in water for their survival. In warm water, less oxygen is dissolved and as a result, survival of aquatic life is difficult. In cold water, oxygen will be dissolved more and aquatic life will get oxygen required for their survival. Now, let us discuss the application of solubility of gases in liquid. It has several applications in industry and it also explains certain biological phenomena. We see such an application in cold drinks and soda water. When we open the sealed lid of cold drinks or soda water bottle, we see bubbles that are coming out of it. Let me consider soda water. Carbon dioxide gas is dissolved in water under high pressure. High pressure is applied to increase the solubility of carbon dioxide. So, when we observe the sealed bottles of cold drinks or soda water, we do not see carbon dioxide and water as separate. But when we open the bottle, pressure inside the bottle will decrease. When pressure decreases, solubility of gas also decreases. As solubility decreases, carbon dioxide comes out in the form of bubbles. That is why we see bubbles coming out of soda water. These bubbles are the bubbles of carbon dioxide gas. Another example is related to scuba divers. When the scuba divers goes inside water, pressure underwater will be more than the pressure at the surface. This high pressure would lead to the collapse of internal organs. So because of this high pressure, the internal organs of scuba divers will be collapsed. So in order to avoid this, these scuba divers carry a cylinder with air under high pressure for breathing. So as to balance the pressure inside the body as well as the pressure outside the body underwater. Many gases like oxygen and nitrogen which are present in air will be dissolved in blood due to this high pressure that is present. When these scuba divers come to the surface, what happens is that the pressure will slowly decrease. 
when the pressure decreases solubility of dissolved gases will also decrease oxygen which is dissolved in blood will be used for many of the metabolic processes but nitrogen so as the cuba divers comes up to the surface solubility of nitrogen will decrease and these nitrogens will be coming out of the blood as bubbles this is very very dangerous these nitrogen bubbles blocks blood capillaries this medical condition is known as bends and this would be the life threatening for human being to avoid bends as well as the toxic effect of high concentrations of nitrogen in the blood the tanks used by scuba divers are filled with air diluted with helium this decreases the concentration of nitrogen in air at high altitudes the partial pressure of oxygen is less than that at the ground level due to this concentration of oxygen in the blood and tissues of people who are living at high altitudes or mountain climbers will be very low low blood oxygen causes climbers to become weak and they are unable to think clearly this condition is what we call as anoxia now if we ask a question how temperature will affect the solubility of gases in liquids the answer is solubility of gases in liquids decreases with increase in temperature when dissolved these gas molecules are present in liquid phase so we can consider the process of dissolution of gas in liquid is similar to that of condensation process heat is liberated in this process means the process is exothermic in nature we have just studied that dissolution process involves dynamic equilibrium and therefore it must follow lee chatelier's principle since the dissolution process is an exothermic process the solubility of the gas decreases with increase in the temperature 